Exadigi Extinction Event! Wow! Digimon killing each other. I know, novel concept, right? That show about learning and bonding with others and growing as a result? Chuck them in the ring and make them bleed. Okay, this is getting weird. There's a good chunk of Digimon Arena games. I hesitate to call them fighters or whatever. Mostly it's a bunch of janky nonsense, but it's Digimon janky nonsense, man. I mean, it's still pretty low scope for the franchise, but hey, let's see if we can't have some fun. Digimon Battle Spirit. Okay, uh, so you're gonna put two Digimon in a box and make them fight. Oh, okay, do I make it fun to play? No. I owned this game as a kid purely because I saw Digimon on the box. Look, if y'all don't like War Greymon, we're not friends. Battle Spirit's a messy prototype of a game. It's colorful and decent to look at, uncomfortably large bear, but Jesus, this game is banking hard on you being a fan. It's also really simple. Two Digimon face off in small arenas, taking turns bapping each other, throwing junk and collecting these orbs. Whoever's got the most when the clock ticks down wins. There's little hazard Digimon on every stage, each programmed to varying levels of annoyance. <laughs> Fuck off! But you can just as well kill them as leave them. They're some of the only interactive elements in the stages, and I guess those make for somewhat varied gameplay. But how do you digivolve? Remember Smash Balls? It's just Smash Balls, except you only got a touch. Digivolution trivializes the match. You become an eight foot tall freak of nature while the other guy's like, no please, I'm just a lizard. And then you're like, so your Digimon is invulnerable. You don't drop orbs when hit. Your moves are enormous. It's extremely easy to corner an opponent and get three to four strong hits on them, which almost always drops lots of orbs. Generally, only one Digivolution will happen per round. And while you can kind of run away if the enemy gets it, it's 20 seconds of getting rolled downtown. On that note, the combat itself is pretty badly balanced. You'd expect moves to do more or less the same damage, you know, drop the same orb count. But some characters like poor Wormmon here have all these garbage moves that drop like maximum two orbs, and the compensation he gets is stick into walls. Renamon chucks some broken glass at a dude and <laughs> meanwhile Agumon and Gabumon are multi-hitting like a fully loaded Gatling gun like boom, 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 boom. it's busted. Anyway, this game has no content? Question mark? Like you play arcade mode or whatever and fight a bunch of guys, then fight the same boss every time. There's nothing else except for linked play. <laughs> The reward is unlocking Digimon, you know, like Agumon but black, Agumon with a tan, some other ones, I guess. Impmon is a bit different because he's just openly overpowered. He uses projectiles, one of which is literally a crowd control fireball. Like, if you lose with this guy, dial back the suck. He doesn't even digivolve, he smacks her dead! <laughs> don't worry, you don't even need to unlock the best character. Literal feces mon. With attacks like poop punch, quick poop shot. <laughs> Poop blast! How could you ever lose? This is a real game I bought with my money. But alas, Dimps made a sequel and only released it in Japan. And then... Look, I know this game's the same fundamentally, but it's so cool. Playing as the characters from Digimon Frontier is something I didn't think I needed. These characters are so fun to play. They have full quality movesets, unlike the last game where some characters just... The game still has no content, not really anyway, but the final boss is harder, so that's something. The levels are really colorful and the characters look really unique. Like they seem better suited to be arena fighters than rookie level Digimon. Part of the good is that someone thought it would be kind of neat to, you know, balance the gameplay. I'm not saying it's fully good now, but hitting produces normal orbs, sparkly orbs that count for two, another that counts for three, and crystals. I can't tell if it's randomized, but you get an assortment of things frequently. I never struggled getting orbs with any character I play. Even my boy Kumamon, who had little baby attacks, but then digivolved and whoa! This man is a f animal. Seriously, digivolving in this game feels so good. You have to earn it by attacking the enemy. It's so much better than the last game. Both fighters can be digivolved at the same time. So it's not just some big f***ing freak bullying a kid out of their lunch money. Lastly, getting enough of those crystals lets you do a super attack that just trashes the other guy. But it can whiff and the startup is fairly avoidable. Every aspect of the game seems like it's trying to amp up the fun. Oh, it 
endorphins! They took out items, which I like. It's more about fighting than brawling, if that makes sense. I thought it might be more interesting if there were a use for orbs in game, like opening a radial menu, like Secret of Mana and spending to get an item or something. Risk versus reward, you know? Lastly, even though I used to think it was stupid that the orbs just flew away, meaning that you'd spend more time collecting than fighting, it's smarter than I thought. It means collecting turns into a scramble where one player is trying to deny the other their orbs and the aggressor who earned them is now in a position where they have to fight back or run and risk losing stray orbs or being hit from behind. That's actually really cool, I think. And maybe if the orbs landed a bit closer, there'd be even more dirty combat and less running. Now it's time for the big boys. Let's get ready to play a Digimon Arena game. This is exactly the same situation we saw with Battle Spirit games. This is a PS1 game and it really feels like it. Combat is slow and weird. It feels like you're underwater most of the time. It's a janky prototype. What do you expect? Your hitboxes, or for normies, your moves are tiny. Piddly baby arm attacks. The enemy barely reacts to them and they barely do damage, at least for normal rookie Digimon. The animations are quick, abrupt, and impactless. It's like pillows are whacking each other. There's also a bunch of unwanted items or Digimon cards that spawn in the arenas. Definitely not product placement. Digimon definitely wouldn't push their cards on children. But hey, you can Digivolve. No worries, this cat is fucked. Uh, okay, to be fair, when you learn the game and stop sucking, it does feel better, and I think some characters feel better than others. I had no issue with Gilmon, for example, but otherwise the gameplay was inconsistent, which sucks because the roster here is pretty good. There's enough characters that you can go fishing for someone you like, you know, and have options. There's also some great unlocks in this game, like actual factual Omnimon, no big deal. Having a Mega Digimon as a character is so much better. Why? Your attacks are actually good. You don't Digivolve, so that bar at the bottom is just a special attack meter now, and you get a big old dang exploding ice wall. I kind of wish these games were mega level Digimon battles. Maybe then they'd be really fun. Of course there's a boss in their single player mode, but because we're a bigger deal than the Game Boy games, we want our game to have a boss with ridiculously powerful moves. We want our players to quit single player mode out of frustration instead of finishing our game with basically only arcade mode some mini games or whatever, even though the game is fundamentally about completing it several times to unlock all the characters. Wait a minute, that sounds like a recipe for- mm. Guys, I'm about to show the better one, okay, but I loaded up Metacritic because fan takes are always so good. It rules! Full stop! This game is awesome! My brother and I played it and liked it more than Super Smash Bros. It is the bomb! Very, very enjoyable and fun game with good character system and arenas is a must. Brilliant, and I've only played the demo. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of the fucking ten. This game is damn nice. You should buy it. This game is a good game for the year it came out. They need to hurry up and make the sequel. P.S. It is off the hook and it is good for the soul. <laughs> How do you people exist? Like, do you just see anything you like and say, this is the best thing ever? Wait a minute, that's why I have subscribers. Oh no! I wasn't kidding about this one. Digimon Rumble Arena 2 is great. Way better. Shockingly better. How did this happen? Now all of these games have Digivolution, but this is the first to take you through it step by step. Like the old games, you hit people and get orbs, but they're not the win condition. They just let you Digivolve. So they devised a really clever way to steal from an older game and make Digivolution a natural and regular part of gameplay. That's awesome. You get a real feeling of progression, not just because your dude looks cooler, most of the time, but your attacks get progressively better. Given movesets in these games aren't complex, but I was surprised to see each level of Digivolution getting unique attacks, and they actually manage to be upgrades. Unlike the last game where you might do more damage, but your attacks aren't necessarily better. Calling this game better than Smash Bros, specifically Melee because they're in the same generation of consoles, would be silly. The controls are pretty stiff, but to be fair, Smash didn't start feeling like butter until Brawl. At least the Digimon stretch in their animations, giving it that cartoony sense of life it needs, and making your bad moves just a little more viable. The roster is probably the best yet with all kinds of classics. It's nice getting the ones from the lesser known anime seasons, but these guys resonated with a generation. I remember being in Korea and talking to a same age female coworker about how cool Digimon was when we were kids. These designs literally are part of the nostalgic backbone of a generation. Sorry, I'm getting serious. Can we, uh, can we get the funny clip? <laughs> 
I really love how when anyone dies, they just vanish. You got this big arena, all these combatants, and one by one, they just, technically it's bad. Visually, it's hilarious. I like the branching path in single player modes where you end up choosing what to fight at the end. So there's more than one final boss and all kinds of weird unlockable characters. I will say that the megas are probably too good, but this wasn't ever gonna be competitive, let's be real. What else is there to say? This game is fun. It feels like the culmination of a long history of failing with critics. It's rough and stiff, but it manages to be fun, which I honestly never expected from a game that looks like this. So who wants to see a dead body? You know, one of the craziest things about the Xbox 360 and that generation of consoles is how big of a leap it felt like. You go from Melee to Bioshock. It's a bit of a jump. Digimon had that opportunity and yeah, the game is textured nicely, but that's about it. I can only imagine how small of a budget this game had. They knew they couldn't just make it a pure arena fighter like the old days. This is the 360 we're talking about. What innovation will this game receive? Story mode. So we can port the game's mechanics into small stages with switches and obstacles and treasure chests. Oh hell yeah dude, that's what I signed up for. You go through an increasingly annoying series of stages and at the end you fight a Digimon. Something about proving who's worthy to kill an evil guy or something like throwing everyone at the threat to the digital world isn't somehow the better option. Anyway, these stages are lame. You can die to stupid crap a lot and at some point you realize you've been dragged through all these dumbass single player modes to unlock characters. Who even cares at this point? It's not like they meaningfully increased the roster size, not really. Okay, so the actual gameplay. It's like a 360 game with a Wii Fighters engine. The whole thing's clunky. The game is about comboing. Sorry, mashing attacks at people until they die. You can digivolve after taking enough damage or dishing it out. A fair alternative, especially because battles are maximum four players in a 3D plane. Maybe the orbs from the last game would have been a hassle, but it's hardly inspiring. Digivolution, for example, regresses. It's a quick burst of power and then it's gone, with hardly enough time to make a meaningful impact unless the opponent isn't paying attention. At least the game game's combat is paced sort of well. Collecting in time-based win conditions aren't my favorite, and having a big life bar is okay, but the three lives system in this is a decent addition, at least if the gameplay is straying away from the older games. But then, I'm justifying an alternative to a good system because it's the more thematically appropriate option for the lesser system. I've realized that I've stopped trying to be funny by now because none of this is fun. This game is a chore. Can you imagine having the shot at giving me, yes me, the game I want with a big old cool 3D Digimon Arena game? So like a current gen Digimon Frontier fighter and it's only coming out in the West So you don't need any cutesy marketing. It can be as angry as Kirby in the West And so you make just the Digimon arena game Just that and nothing else barely even scratching at what the IP can do Have you seen those Digimon RPGs and as far as I know there's never been another This is the definitive end of Digimon fighting brawling arena whatever games and I know nobody really cares But that sucks man. Yes Digimon is about friendship and all that. But what about being a rival? What about seeing who's toughest? Who's training hardest? What about badass armored lizards throwing fireballs? Damn, dude.